Welcome back to the College Initiatives ACT test prep video series. This video is going to cover punctuation and subject verb agreement. It's the second part of our two-part English section series. So first I'm going to go over punctuation, then I'm going to go over subject verb agreement because those are the two biggest things that are tested on the ACT English section that you might be a little bit rusty on. So punctuation, we always we know about periods, we know about exclamation points, question marks, quotation marks even, but there are some different kinds of punctuation called what interrupters that you need to know more about because they're tested on pretty heavily in the ACT. So you've got your commas, which look like this right here, your semicolons, colons, dashes, and finally parentheses. The ACT on your grammar and editing sections of the English portion is going to test you very, very strongly on these punctuation marks. So we're going to go through commas first. It's probably the most common one that you've seen. They're used to separate lists and clauses, but something that's going to test you on a lot are comma splices. And what's a comma splice? It just occurs when you separate two or more independent clauses with a comma but no conjunction. We're going to go over that in a second, but first I want you to see a comma in action. So, examples. The student was smart, comma, obnoxious, comma, and ready to work. This is just a simple list here of characteristics about the student. You can't say the student was smart, obnoxious, and ready to work without a comma. That's just not how it works. The second one, after I read, I went to the mall. So, after I read is not a sentence. It's what you call a dependent clause. It cannot stand alone. So we separate this dependent clause from this independent clause with a comma. After I read, comma, I went to the mall. Finally, my dad cooked dinner, comma, and I waited for the food to be ready. This is separating two dependent, or rather independent clauses, and we've got a conjunction here to do that. Back to comma splices, though. Um, so, an example of a complete sentence, I ate pizza. That's a complete sentence. We know this because it's got a subject, which is I, and a verb, ate. You ate pasta, also a complete sentence. Why? This is your subject. This is your verb. That's all you need. A lot of people, though, are going to try to join these I ate pizza, comma, you ate pasta. But you can't do this because that's what I called, what everybody calls, a comma splice. You cannot join two deep, or rather independent clauses by a comma. The ACT is going to try to make you do that. You cannot do this. We're going to see in just a little bit that a semicolon can do this. Comma cannot. You've got to have a conjunction. So like a but or an and or something along those lines. So I ate pizza, comma, but you ate pasta is correct because the comma is joined with a conjunction. Do not, do not, do not, do not, do not join two independent clauses with a comma and no conjunction. You'll get that wrong every time. So a semicolon, I said we were going to see how you could join these two independent clauses. Semicolons are your way to do this. They're used to separate lists and clauses without a conjunction. So some examples of this. The fox ran through the woods, the rabbit followed. Again, the fox ran through the woods, can stand by itself. The rabbit followed, also can stand by itself. I cannot have a comma here because that would be a comma splice. If you wanna, if you wanna join these two sentences together and not put a conjunction like an and or a but, it's gotta be that semicolon. Also, semicolons can be used to separate items in a list, but only after a colon. These people are invited to the party, colon. April, semicolon, Ariel, semicolon, Sarah, Michelle, Eric. Two main uses for semicolons, joining two independent clauses without a conjunction, also listing things after a colon. Now, just talked about colons. What are they? Essentially, they're an equal sign for a sentence. They join two clauses. At least one of them must be an independent clause. At least one can be both, but you cannot have two dependent clauses joined by a colon because that's just not how it works. So, here's an example of this. I need the following items from the store. I've got a, a, an independent clause here, and then followed by milk, chicken, eggs. 
if this says I need colon milk chicken eggs that's not gonna work it's gotta be an entire independent clause next dashes and parentheses these interject unnecessary but still relevant information so essentially if you take out something from the sentence that is surrounded by dashes or parentheses the sentence should still make sense so an example also they essentially function in the same way really it's just aesthetic if you want to do parentheses or dashes so like I bought a new car parentheses it was blue if you take out this was it was blue it would still make sense I bought a new car great parentheses can be filled with independent or dependent clauses it doesn't matter so again this is just for extraneous information doesn't have to be in the sentence subject verb agreement we're gonna go through this really quickly then we're gonna move on to a new video so subject I've already mentioned this it's the topic of a sentence I you me the mountains Memphis the test etc it's a noun it's what the sentence is about the verb is what the subject does it's the action and according to grammatical rules these two must agree based on some rules so the ACT is going to test your knowledge of subject verb agreement a lot as well two big things it's going to test punctuation subject verb agreement let's check this out so in the present tense if a subject is singular its verb will usually end in an s or an es this is not true if you're using the second person singular subject which is you generally speaking that's not going to end in an s or an es but we'll cover that in a second in the present tense of this if a subject is plural its verb usually ends without an s or an es for example if i have a sentence about a dog playing chess i would say the dog plays chess there's only one dog so the verb grabs an s if it were to be the dogs play chess it's going to be the dogs play chess only one s is going to be there so that seems easy but here's a longer sentence that might be a little more difficult to figure out when you're doing the act it's not going to give you the dog plays chess and ask you to choose between play and plays it's just not going to it's going to do one of these long multi-clause sentences so Diamond and I, upon tying our shoes and scanning the horizon for signs of the snowstorm, and after the front gathers with a hum of malice, either run or runs for the basement seeking protection. This could be difficult. So what you need to do is identify the subject. There are lots of nouns here. Notice that? We've got Diamond and I, shoes, horizon, signs, snowstorm, front, hum. All of these are nouns so if you're just looking for nouns it's not gonna work a lot of times you've got to go back to the very beginning of the sentence and figure out what the subject is so diamond and I so we know that's plural which means we're gonna choose run here we've got more than one person here that means that there would be an S technically if we were talking about diamond and I so it's gonna be run now, a, a word of warning, it's not always going to, the subject isn't always going to be the very first part of the sentence. It might say, upon tying our shoes and scanning the horizon for the signs of the snowstorm, diamond and I, after the front gathers with a hum of malice, run for the basement seeking protection. So don't always look at the beginning of the sentence for that. You've got to know what the sentence is about. Otherwise, you're going to get tripped up. So that's it for this one. Punctuation, look over that subject verb agreement look over that stay tuned for more videos we've got math sections coming up there should be three videos about that a video about reading and a video about science thanks for tuning in i'll talk with you next time